Hey, what is up guys? This is Nishi from MST.TV here, back with another Market Watch episode. We're still at a really busy point when it comes to the Yu-Gi-Oh! market. We just had amazing defenders released here in the TCG, and while it's not really looking like it's going to be an impactful meta set right away, there might be some things that are still worth paying attention to. Of course, also over in the OCG, Cyberstorm Access just got released, and it brings with it a bunch of support for various archetypes. We'll definitely want to keep an eye on deck lists over there, because those things will give us something of a glance into what our game could look like in a few months, and will start having an impact on our market immediately. Let's get started. So we're going to start off things by taking a look at a couple of cards from Amazing Defenders, but I want to preface things by saying that overall, the set just doesn't look like it's going to be all that great, just in terms of like a product, right? The archetypes coming out aren't good, the reprints aren't great, and even the choices for collector's rares are pretty underwhelming. With that being said, we have to be careful when it comes to picking up singles from the set. It should be really easy to say that because the archetypes are bad, they should automatically be cheap. However, vendors and stores still need to make their money back on the product that they opened, and they will look for any way that they can do so. Therefore, if any of the archetypes or new cards from Amazing Defenders sees even a little bit of meta play, we could probably expect prices to bounce up higher and be a bit more volatile, just because everyone would want to see something that could actually help them to make their money back. Also, it significantly limits the supply of the card if there's just not that much product opened, which could also contribute to higher prices down the road. Anyways, Ohime is from the Makanko archetype, which looks like the most meta-ready of the three archetypes. It's a ritual-based theme, but from what I can see, it looks like Makanko gets used as more of an engine than an actual standalone deck. This card lets you search for another Makanko and then discard a card, so helping to get through your deck a little bit faster. I think that when this set first came out, Dark Worlds adopted this engine over in the OCG. Now, right now, this card is about $20. Obviously, this is still early, and I would expect a card like this usually to drop down to around $10 to $12, but maybe with how little value there is in Amazing Defenders, some people want to go and just like not sell this card for anything less than $20, so maybe this price will stick a little bit higher. Personally, I would hold off on grabbing these for now, but if you really want to try to play with them, maybe try getting a set for around $40. The other archetype that's worth keeping an eye on is the Pearly archetype. On first glance, I know it's really easy to disregard the theme as just being a bunch of like cute Eevee evolutions and just kind of assume that they aren't going to be all that competitive, which might be true, especially right now. However, in the OCG, they are actually seeing a small amount of success. I believe that in the most recent Road of the King report, they show that Pearly is actually a solid tier 2-ish deck that sees a small amount of competitive play as the deck receives two new cards in Cyberstorm Access. I don't think that this is what anyone was expecting, but it's definitely interesting. When I look at a couple of the Pearly decklists, it does make me think kind of like Zodiac. Now for right now, Pearly is still around $10, which isn't a crazy high price or anything like that. However, it definitely still is a bit higher because it's a new card, right? The card should fall back down to around the $3 to $5 mark usually. Keep in mind though, that if this card is on people's radars from these OCG results, they might not be willing to sell at anything cheaper than this, and also because the archetypes cards are so cute, this deck will demand a lot of attention from casual players as well. So yeah, overall, honestly, this deck might just be one to pick up slowly over the next couple of months because it might actually be the most competitive of the three new themes, but even then, you'll want to wait and see just how much prices cool down before you pick it all up. On to the next one, a card that I want to talk about really quickly is Quaking Mirror Force. This is a Mirror Force trap card that, when your opponent monster attacks, lets you flip all of your opponent's attack position monsters into face down defense mode, and then stops them from changing battle positions permanently. This card definitely could be interesting, and was really cool when it first came out, but to me, it seems to be trending on the market for the wrong reasons. With Kesh Tira coming out next month, players are looking at cards like Swords of Concealing Light and Book of Eclipse as side deck techs against that strategy, and Quaking Mirror Force on paper looks like it performs a similar function. However, it's actually a lot worse, and most likely isn't going to see any play. Shangri-Era has zero attack points and probably won't be in attack mode, so this card doesn't actually address the problem, and this card is also just so much slower than either of the other two answers, it just seems pretty bad overall. 
Now, it's definitely possible that this card could be useful in other decks, the two that I'm thinking of being Ghostrix and Ninjas, but I don't think anyone is really paying attention to Ghostrix right now, and I think this card is too slow for a combo deck like Ninjas as well. Anyways, fortunately, we are not seeing a ton of movements, that's too crazy, but this is now a 3 to $4 card if you're looking for a near mint ultra rare copy, which is the card's only hollow printing. It also got a couple of common printings that you should be able to get for only a dollar or so, not that bad at all. So if you really want to grab a couple copies just to play around with for a bit, those commons are probably going to be your best option. One other thing for us to acknowledge here quickly is Kash Tira Shangri Era. This is the main Ixies monster for the Kash Tira deck that is responsible for blocking your opponent's zones. Definitely one of the more key pieces of the deck. This does also have some other really great effects, allowing you to summon out a Kash Tira and having its own built-in protection. I think that we all know just how impactful this card is going to be on the format once Photon Hypernova is released here in the TCG. Now, we're bringing this card up because although it is just a super rare from Darkwing Blast, a set that isn't very old at all, the card is now actually moving up. It was down at 50 cents, 25 cents, the way that you would expect a bulk super rare to be. However, with all of the hype that Kash Tira is getting from players now, and the fact that Shangri Era is a two of in the Kash Tira extra deck, Shangri Era is now up to two to three dollars a piece. This isn't a huge bump, right? But it's still early, so it's worth noting in case the card continues to trend upward even further. If we see Kash Tira take up a significant portion of the competitive meta, then I could definitely see this card continuing to go up even higher, maybe even to like $5 each. If you opened up any Darkwing Blast, you'll want to go through your Hollow Bulk and make sure that you have all your copies of this card set aside. I definitely recommend bringing them to your Photon Hypernova sneak peeks and offloading them to players that pulled the Kash Tira cards and are then interested in building the deck. The next card we have here is Ad Emancipator Researcher. So Ad Emancipators were a really scary deck just a few years ago. They were a crazy deck that had access to a ton of resources and crazy combos. And I think the really crazy thing was that they could recoup the resources to do things again the following turn. Now over in the OCG, Ad Emancipators are actually really making a splash in the format yet again. This time they are doing it with the help of the new Super Heavy Samurai cards from Cyberstorm Access, as well as the existing Verna Self monsters, and making some huge combos that can build pretty big boards. I don't really know that much about the new Super Heavy Samurai stuff, but overall the deck looks really cool to play. However, I do want to caution all of you that I don't actually think that this deck is going to be doing anything here in the TCG. That's because there are two key cards that the OCG has access to that we do not, Block Dragon and That Grass Looks Greener. These are two crazy powerful cards that are now banned here in the TCG, but those two things alone will drastically change the power level of this deck, and without those two key pieces, this deck isn't going to do anything nearly close if you tried to adapt the build here. Nevertheless, I think the cards are still on people's radars. The original Secret Rare Researchers from Secret Slayers are now at $11 to $12 each. I think they were at $8 or $9 before. Not a huge bump up quite yet. However, the card also has a Megaton printing as an ultra rare that is currently only 50 cents or so. Just in case, you guys should still own a set of the ultra rare researchers at least, because the card itself is still a really good card overall, but don't expect this deck to see too much success here with the limitations that the deck has in the TCG. Next up, Foxytune is a card that looks like it has a chance to come back into the game. Foxytune is a key piece of the Punk engine that saw play a few formats ago. For a while, it did look like Punks were going to see play in absolutely everything. We saw it in Sword Soul, Dragon Link, and all of those crazy adventurer token Rose Dragon decks that people were playing around with. Now, however, Chaos Ruler has been banned. This engine did fall off quite a bit. It seemed like the whole point of the engine was that you could make Chaos Ruler and mill a bunch of cards. However, I have seen a bit of hype for the punk cards online, a bunch of people trying it out, and a couple of replays over on DB Grinder's channel helping as well. The punk cards are still really strong, they just kind of need the correct engine to complement the cards. It seems like the two that people are turning to right now are the Keshtira and the Bistials, two engines that are really strong in the current format. Because of this, it seems that Foxy Tunes are gradually starting their upward trend back up. Remember, on release, this card was only $5 or so, then it shot up to around $30, and then with the Chaos Ruler ban, it fell back down to like $7, $8. Now, however, we have the Ultras already back up to $14, and the Collector's Rares back up to $62, $63. 
This is obviously still early, and despite the hype, I haven't seen any events where the deck has managed to top and see competitive success. However, it might still be worth paying attention to for after the next ban list drops. The Punk Engine might be something that more people look at playing or implementing into their decks. We do, however, have to be wary of a reprint since it does feel like around the time that we could expect to see reprints of the Grand Creator's archetypes, so Exo Sisters, Adventurer Token, and Punk, so don't jump in too hard and pick up too many copies of everything quite yet. Just grab enough for yourself to use if you are interested in playing the strategy, depending on how strong you feel it might be moving forward. One last card that I want to talk about quickly here is number 90 Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord. So this is a generic rank 8 monster that is basically just a monster effect negation. Pretty cool for any deck that is looking to make rank 8s. However, I don't think that here in the TCG there are very many of those running around right now, unless you're trying to play like Blue Eyes or something like that. However, over in the OCG, I believe that number 90 is still seeing play because of the Punk Engine and Chaos Ruler still running around. Road of the King showed a Punk Bestial deck, which looks really, really cool actually, and they played a few level 8s, like Chaos Ruler, Foxy Toon, Lebelion, so they chose to run number 90 in the extra deck. Definitely a cool card to see, though. Obviously, without Chaos Ruler in the format here, I don't think that number 90 is going to be as great. However, the card only has one printing here in the TCG, from Battles of Legend Relentless Revenge, which I think was the second ever Battles of Legend set to come out. This card's price has been pretty volatile, it seems to have been fluctuating between $27 and $35 for quite a while, it saw a recent spike up to $45, but has now cooled back down to right at around $40. As cool as this card is, it's something that I would be staying away from completely. Its price is just too high, and with only one printing I could definitely see it being reprinted the second a deck wants to try to use it. I also don't see any current decks using it, so I feel like there's minimal point in keeping it right now. If you do have this card, I think it's probably a better idea to offload it while you can before it gets reprinted and tanks in price. Alright guys, that is it for today's episode. I know it's kind of sad to see that there's nothing too great in Amazing Defenders, but as someone who likes collecting random archetypes, it'll be interesting for me to go out and see what cards people are actually keeping from the set. I'm probably going to try and max out all the pearly stuff because I'm a really big Pokemon guy. Those things definitely look like Eevee evolutions, but either way, you guys should also make sure that you keep an eye as much as you can on the OCG format over there. It seems like Cyberstorm Access was a really influential set with a lot of different support for various things, so we definitely want to keep an eye on how those cards are influencing the market and what decks are better as a result. Anyways guys, if you did enjoy today's Market Watch episode, please make sure that you let me know by slamming that thumbs up button for me. Also make sure you leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys think about today's cards and also make sure that you guys let me know what other cards are trending on the market as well. Also if you haven't already, do make sure that you hit that subscribe button and until next time guys, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV.